All right, we're going to take a look now. Welcome back, you guys, to your favorite Calc 2 course. We're going to take a look at improper integrals of the second type, which is with an infinite discontinuity, right? And so you're thinking of, like, these are typically when you have, like, some vertical asymptote, and it's shooting it up, or maybe it's um, shooting it. Let me move these over. Maybe it's shooting it down, All right? So it's an infinite discontinuity. And so we're going to have three types of those with infinite discontinuity. So type two improper integrals. So let's look at this first one. And uh, let me see if I can move this a little bit. There we go. And this is asking us, uh, take a look at this um, infinite discontinuity, right? It would go from zero to one. But if you notice here, Oops. Um, X can't be zero, right? We can't divide by zero on this. So um, this is a type two infinite discontinuity, right? As we're approaching zero from the right, is shooting this thing up. So improper integral. This is a type two. Um, and it's specifically, if you look up here, uh, number two, uh, it's continuous from zero to one. The zero is the one that has the issue, right? So we're going to use this right there. Oops. Move this up. So we got a type two, uh, number two. Uh, so this is continuous on A to B, infinite discontinuity at A, infinite discontinuity at X being A. So what we're going to do is we're going to let C take a limit of C if it goes to A from the right, and then we'll go from C uh, to B of this function. And so here we have the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over to the third root of x is the same as the limit as C goes to 0 from the right from C to 1. So we go ahead and uh, run the integral. So we've got uh, x to the negative 1 third plus 1. So x to the 2 thirds all over 2 thirds times 3 halves from C to 1. And so we've got uh, three halves times one to the two thirds, right? So times one minus three halves. Now we let uh, c approach zero from the right, so we can let it. We can go ahead and allow it. It's defined there to be that zero. And so we've just got uh, three halves times one minus zero. So this just ends up being three halves. So the infinite in, improper integral. Does converge, converges, and has a finite area of three halves. Right. So again, look back at this picture. Remember, this was this was shooting up, right? It never never touched at zero, but this area actually ends up being three halves from zero to one. Alright, so next one we got uh, 1 over x cubed, which is kind of a look at 1 over x cubed. We're going from 0 to 2 on this. Um, notice it's 
um, I have an infinite discontinuity again at x being 0, right? It's not defined at x being 0. So this is a type 2, uh, number 2, where it's continuous on not including a, but up to b is fine with an infinite discontinuity at x being a. And so if you look at the reference sheet there, that tells you, let's take the limit of C goes to A from the right, uh, from C to B of this function. And let's see if this will work. So let's plug it in, 0 to 2, uh, 1 over x cubed dx would be the same as the limit of C goes to 0 from the right, of C to 2, x to the negative 3 dx. So this ends up being a limit as c goes to 0 from the right, x to the negative 2 all over negative 2 from c to 2. So we got negative uh, 1 over 2x squared from c to 2. So we got the limit as c goes to 0 from the right, negative 1 over 2 times 2 squared minus negative 1 over 2c squared. And so we've got the limit as c goes to 0 from the right, negative 1, 8, plus 1 over 2c squared. Now if you think about as c approaches 0 from the right, right, so I, I let, like, if c is 1, that would be 1 over 2 times 1 squared, or I, but I got to get closer and closer to zero from the right. I just can't let it be zero, obviously, because it's undefined, right? And so that will that will take this to infinity, right? Like if you think about like c being like point oh 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 one type of deal, right? Um, but let me get it even closer. Let me let c be point oh 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 even more zeros, and then a one, and so on, right? It's just going. It's getting causing that value to get bigger and bigger and bigger, it's shooting it up to infinity, right? If you look at one over two x squared, right? As I approach zero, it's just shooting it up to infinity as I approach zero from the right. So I have negative one eight plus infinity. So this thing's just ends up being infinity, right? So this thing diverges, diverges, does not converge. All right, here we've got, uh, we're going from negative 1 to 2. Uh, notice x cannot be 0 again, right? We've got this infinite discontinuity at x being 0. And so we're a type 2 infinite discontinuity, but we're a number 3 where... From A to B, you know, negative 1 and 2, the ends, end points, those are, those are fine. We're continuous there. It's the C that's the issue. And so you set it up, you go from A to C, and then you go from C to B. And then you're going to have to account for that uh, C, C, of course, being 0. So here we have from negative 1 to 2, whoops, let me make my function n 1 over x cubed is the same as if I go from negative 1 to 0 and then I go from 0 to 2. Now uh, here's and th now at this point then you say oh well do these they both have to converge to work but we know this was our last problem right here we already know from the last Example, this one diverges. All right, we just did that in example nine. So we conclude, you know, and, and so I'm not even going to bother looking at that one, all right? So since the second part diverges, last example, the original and proper integral.
diverges. And I, I made a little note here as well. You know, remember to check for infinite discontinuities at interior points. Like if you had not recognized this was not defined at zero, and you'd tried to run it normally, you would think that it would would give you that three eighths, right? And it would have worked out for you, which of course is incorrect. All right, here's here's another one. Let's take a look at this. Here, notice. We've got the vertical asymptote at x equals 1, right? We've got this infinite discontinuity at x equaling 1. And so we are a type 2, number 1, where we're going to go approach B from the left. A to C of this function, right? So the infinite discontinuity is at the B portion, right? So this is continuous. It's continuous from A is not the issue. It's the B that's the issue, right? And so this will end up being 0 to 1, 1 over 1 minus x. dx would be the limit. C approaches 1 from the left of 0 to C of 1 over 1 minus x. So we're going to go ahead and we'll let oops, that's a dx. u be 1 minus x, so du is a negative dx. So let's give it a negative dx in front and back. So we got limit of c approaches 1 from the left of a negative 1 over u du. So we got the limit c approaches 1 from the left of a negative natural log of uh, u, which is 1 minus x, from 0 to c. plus the natural log of 1, which is 0. Now as we're approaching um, C, uh, 1 from the left, and maybe you want to think about, uh, let's think about this for a minute. Negative natural log of 1 minus x. Let me rewrite that as negative x plus 1. Let me rewrite that as, let me take a negative out. So I take the natural log of 1, which is the 1, so this just ends up being, so this defined at uh, 1, right? I don't have the natural log of 0, and so it'd be like this kind of deal. And so as you approach 1 from the left, see how that shoots to infinity? So this is infinity plus 0, or if you could just think about as you approach one from the left, like plugging in like a 0.9999999, right? With, you know, the closer and closer you get to one from the left hand side, the further up it shoots it, right? There's another way to think about that, right? Again, with numbers, you can think approaching one from the left, right? Let this go way out. And so you got negative natural log. And this is like point oh 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 whatever that is. One. And so that's like 
infinity. So you have shoots to infinity, however you want to think about that. But to get infinity, so this thing, infinity plus zero, so this thing diverges. So the original improper integral diverges. All right, here we've got an improper integral, another in, uh, discontinuity. Notice we've got a vertical asymptote at x equals one. So we've got an interior discontinuity. So it's a type two, type two again of an uh, infinite discontinuity, uh, but it's number three. And so what we'll do is, you know, because this is good, it's continuous on uh, zero to one, but the one is the problem. And then from one to three, again, three is okay. So we'll split this up. We'll go from zero to one. And then we'll go from one to three. And so this one is a type two number one. And this one's a type two number two. And so this uh, type two number one, we're going to take the limit as C approaches um, the one. From we got to come from the left, and then we'll go from zero to c of that x minus one to the negative two thirds, and then over here we're going to go limit as c. We're going to approach one from the right this time, um, and then we'll go from uh, c up to three. And then let me come down here. Now let's go ahead and run it. So I get x minus 1 to the 1 third all over 1 third, so times 3. And so we got, now I can let uh, C be 1, and I'm okay here. So I got 3, 1 minus 1 equals 0 to the 1 third, minus 3, I got negative 1 to the 1 third, plus over here I got 3, minus 2 to the 1 third, minus 3. Again, I can let 1, C be 1 here, no problem, to the 1 third, right? So I got 0 uh, minus 3, the third root of negative 1 is a negative 1. Plus 3, 2 to the 1 third uh, minus 0. So it looks like I got 3 plus 3 times 2 to the 1 third. Let's put that in radical notation. So 3 plus a 3 and the third root of 2, right? So that's so the improper integral does converge. And this unbounded area on the curve, because we went from 0 to 3, right? But we had that vertical asymptote at um, 1. Still has a finite area, interestingly enough. All right, so this one's interesting. It's um, 
it's improper for two reasons, right? Number one, the limit of integration is infinite, right? See how we go to infinity there? And, oops. And number two, it's also on this interval, it has an infinite discontinuity at zero, right? Because we're going from zero, but it has an issue at specifically zero. We've got that vertical asymptote there. So we've got an infinite discontinuity there as well. So in order to treat this it, as, a, as a type one, let's address the type one first. We're gonna split it at that convenient point, right? So we're gonna, let's treat this as a type one and let's split this up. Let's go from zero uh, to one. And then we'll go from uh, one to infinity And here we've got, um, here's our type one, number one. And over here we've got, um, this is a type two, uh, specifically number two. Okay. And so we'll go ahead and uh, let's do this first one here we've got the limit we're going to go as c approaches zero from the right and then we'll go from c to one of this one over root x x plus one dx okay and then for the um Now let's address the infinite one here, going from one to infinity. And so we'll let uh, C go, limit of C goes to infinity, and we'll go from one to that C infinity. Uh, uh, no, no, uh. All right, so um, if I let, what I'm going to do is let me let uh, u be the square root of x. And so du would be 1 half x to the negative 1 half dx. So it's a 1 over 2 root x dx. That would be my du. So I need a 2 there, and let me give it a 2 over 1. And same thing over here. I give it a 2 here and a 2 over 1 uh, there. And so then what I would have here is the limit as c approaches 0 from the right of 2. And then one over, and let me just circle this. This is my, there's my du. And so I've got to address the x plus one. Well, x is the square root of x squared. So that's my u squared plus one. That's why I did that, so that I could see my arc tangent in there. And then plus, Limit as c goes to zero. I'm sorry, c goes to uh, infinity of two one over u squared plus one du. And c this is c to one. So we got two arc tangent of u which is root x from c to 1 plus 2 arc tangent of u which is root x from 1 to c
you know, the arc tangent of the square root of 1 minus 2 arc tangent square root of c plus over here 2 arc tangent square root of 1 minus 2 arc tangent or I'm sorry that's a c right there 2 arc tangent square root of 1 Well, I got two. The arc tangent of one is pi fours minus two. And if we let c go to zero from the right, so the arc tangent of zero is zero. And over here we got uh, plus two. And we got the arc tangent. Now c is going to infinity. So the arc tangent of infinity, remember that approaches pi halves as it shoots out in that graph minus two and the arc tangent of one is pi fours and so we got two times pi fours minus two times pi four so i got zero plus two pi over two so zero plus pi is just pi so the improper integral converges again And the unbounded area of that region, because we were going from zero, which it didn't even touch it as zero, right? Out to infinity, if you remember this graph, right? Remember it had this vertical asymptote, right? So from zero to infinity, though, the unbounded area of the region is still finite, and it's pi. All right, this problem is asking us, use the formula for the arc length to show the circumference of the circle. All right, if you've got a x squared plus y squared equals 1, you, you know, your unit circle, we know the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. And if you're, if it's the unit circle and it's got a radius of 1, right, we're trying to show that the circumference is 2 pi. So what I'm going to do first is let's just consider a quarter of the circle for a minute. And let's compute that arc length. So let's consider a fourth of the circle. Here's my equation for that. Square root of 1 minus x squared, but I'm only looking from 0 out to 1. And so my arc length formula was 1 plus y prime squared dx, right? And what we have, let's, let's go ahead and go to the side for a minute. Note that our y here is uh, square root of 1 minus x squared because we've got to take this derivative. So we've got 1 half, 1 minus x squared. Now it's to the negative a half, chain rule times negative uh, 2x. So our, our y prime ends up being negative x over the square root of 1 minus x squared, right? So now I have my y prime. And let's go ahead and do the arc length now. Um, this arc length from 0 to 1 would be square root of 1 plus negative x over the square root of 1 minus x squared being squared dx. And so the arc length for a fourth of this circle is 1 plus, I got uh, x squared over that, I'll undo the radical, 1 minus x squared dx. And so I got 1 minus, if I get a common denominator, all over 1 minus x squared. See, that those are gone. And so we've got the square root of 1, which is 1, over the square root of 1 minus x squared uh, dx on this. And remember, uh, the integral of 1 over the square root of a squared minus u squared du is the arc sine of u over a plus a constant, right? And so I'm going to end up, I'm going to end up using that. Um, now, when I'm looking at this, though, I have an improper integral as a problem. I have uh, at 1, I've got an infinite discontinuity, right? x can't be 1. It makes this thing undefined. And so this is a type 2, number 1, 
infinite discontinuity uh, at that B, at, B, at X being one. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the limit as C approaches one uh, from the uh, left, and we'll go from zero to C of one over square root of one minus X squared DX. And so we got the limit, C approaches one from the left, and we've got the arc sine of x from zero to c so we've got the arc sine of c minus the arc sine of zero and so we've got the arc sine of one minus the arc sine of zero right so arc sine of one if we, what is the arc sine of 1? Well, let's set it equal to theta for a minute. That means the sine of theta equals 1, and I'm looking for negative pi halves to pi halves for that being true. That's where we cut off the sine when we're uh, creating the arc sine. And so that would have to be at pi halves. Right? So the arc sine of 1 is theta. We know theta is pi halves. So this is pi halves. Similarly, for the arc sine of 0, that just, I mean, that just ends up being 0. So this ends up being pi halves, this arc length. Now remember, this is only a fourth of a circle, right? And so pi halves is only a fourth of a circle's arc length. In other words, the, and we're trying to find the whole circumference. So the circumference would be four times that pi halves, or two pi. So sure enough, circumference of the unit circle is 2 pi.